Hi friends, and welcome to the Weekly Roundup, where we discuss just a fraction of the insanity that takes place in the world each week. Our top story today, just three weeks after Tennessee became the first state to ban drag shows, a transgender man shot three children and three adults at a Christian private school. Wow, that's a lot of threes. If I were a conspiracy theorist, I might say the Freemasons had something to do with this one. But luckily, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a reasonable person who takes the news at face value. Of course, before the parents of the slain children had a chance to mourn their passing, the ghouls took a break from painting rainbows on crosswalks to dance provocatively on their graves. One especially wicked little troll is David Pakman who tweeted, Very surprising that there would be a mass shooting at a Christian school, given that lack of prayers is often blamed for these horrible events. Is it possible they weren't praying hard enough or correctly, despite being a Christian school? After he received backlash for the tweet, he acted in true demonic form and accused his critics of being anti-Semitic. You know, because apparently even the Semites hold Christians to a higher standard than themselves. Hey, I got no complaints about that. David isn't the only one shifting blame for his sins. Our friend AOC robbed me of a few more brain cells this week after posting this brilliant psychoanalysis on child predators. Many of these disgusting and insinuating attacks on trans and LGBT people are actually projections of what predatory cisgender and often straight men do when left alone in the presence of women or sometimes horribly children. So instead of getting you to challenge the patriarchy, they're trying to get you to challenge the very gender expressiveness that challenges patriarchy. Don't get it twisted, because a lot of people attacking drag are projecting. Ah, the old takes one to no one defense. Looks like AOC has the same speechwriter as Kamala Harris. Space is exciting. Space, it affects us all. And it connects us all. You can check out more words of wisdom from AOC, such as, I know you are, but what am I? I'm rubber and you're glue. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. And my personal favorite, Nuh uh. All jokes aside, though, this transgender shooter thing is a very obvious ploy to send a message to the American people. This agenda is top priority, and if you get in our way, we will come for you and your children. And this isn't just a wild guess on my part. All week, the mainstream media has been sympathizing with the shooter, painting her as the real victim of this tragedy. The Mirror published an article about Audrey Hale, claiming her artwork was whimsical and childlike, implying that if she wasn't driven to murder children, she might be drawing cute little pictures for them instead. The Guardian claimed the right is desperate and bigoted for using the shooting to malign trans people. And of course, even Blue Check Twitter piled on as user Oliver Willis likened the New York Post to a pro-Nazi paper for accurately describing the incident. A few months ago, I wrote about Der Sturmer, a pro-Nazi paper in 1930s and 40s Germany laid the groundwork for the Holocaust by linking every crime to Jewish people. Anyhow, here's the front page of Rupert Murdoch's New York Post today. And the headline reads, Transgender Killer targets Christian school. So after a decade of being bludgeoned with demands to properly identify the gender of trans people, you're suddenly a Nazi and a bigot for doing just that. It's almost like the rules are completely arbitrary. And if you think all of this is bad, you haven't seen anything yet. This was the official statement from the White House press secretary on the tragedy. Our hearts go out to uh, the, those, the trans community as they are under attack right now. And this was President Biden's statement in his first official appearance after the incident. My name is Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband. And I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. I think I'm kidding. I'm not. These are the people who will tell you Christian nationalists are the real protected group in Western society. I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. Now, while the David Pakmans of the world are burning bridges between straight and gay, black and white, and Christian and Jew, Kanye West is doing his very best to build those bridges back up. That's right, the controversial rapper is back on Instagram claiming he likes Jews again after watching Jonah Hill in the movie 21 Jump Street. Watching Jonah Hill in 21 Jump Street made me like Jewish people again. No one should take anger against one or two individuals and transform that into hatred towards millions of innocent people. 
No Christian can be labeled anti-Semitic knowing Jesus is Jew. Thank you, Jonah Hill. I love you. Why does Kanye West always talk like he's an alien time traveler experiencing our culture for the first time? 21 Jump Street was released in 2012. I'm pretty sure that movie's older than his new wife. A vibrator maker has been ordered to pay out $4 million for tracking users' sexual activity. Sex toy maker WeVibe has agreed to pay customers up to $10,000 each after shipping a smart vibrator, which tracked owners' use without their knowledge. The WeVibe 4 Plus is a 90-pound Bluetooth-connected vibrator, which can be controlled through an app. It is marketed as a way to allow couples to keep their flame ignited, together or apart. Oh yeah, lovely. Nothing says I love you like blasting radiation right up your special lady's vagina. Man, I appreciated these perverts more when they were peeping through windows and drilling penis-sized holes between bathroom stalls. There's just something inherently unsexy about vaginal biometrics. Speaking of biometrics, Panera rolls out Amazon One Palm payments. Meet Amazon One, the fast, convenient, contactless identity service that allows you to enter, identify and pay using only your palm. I don't know why they're acting like palm payments are revolutionary. Us women have been using our palms to pay for stuff for centuries. Ah, whatever Amy Schumer's audience would have laughed. ESPN honors Leah Thomas in celebrating Women's History Month segment. ESPN on Sunday honored former University of Pennsylvania swimmer Leah Thomas as part of a Celebrating Women's History Month segment. The segment brought up Thomas's transition from male to female, her win at the NCAA championships, and competing amid criticism from the swimming world. You know, I actually think this is great. The 90s kid in me is loving it. I want to see Mrs. Doubtfire on the cover of Home and Garden. I want the nutty professor to win a Nobel Prize for his scientific achievements. I want to see the fashion world platform the Wayne sisters. And I want to see the NBA finally give Airbud the credit he deserves. Remember how many movies there were about talking dogs? Man, those were good times. And now for my favorite segment of the show. The one where I tell you that once again, conspiracy theorists were right. Back in 2022, I filmed a video about the war in Ukraine where I predicted the sanctions on Russia would lead to the collapse of the US dollar and ultimately to the transition to central bank digital currency. A video that received quite a lot of backlash at the time, mostly in the form of emotional Nancy boys telling me to stay in my own lane. Bitch, I'm a woman. I couldn't stay in my lane if I tried. Well, what do you know? Putin is strengthening the UN's role as Russian's foreign currency of choice. He said, we are now in favor of using the Chinese UN for settlements between Russia and the countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. I am confident that these forms of settlement in UN will develop between Russian partners and their counterparts in third countries. Ugh, that sounds serious. Better stock up on cigarettes and tampons because we're in for a wild ride. All right, guys, that's it for me today. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out some other videos from my channel. I will see you all next week for the next weekly roundup. Bye. Yeah, you look at feminism. What are the positive parts of masculinity that women are emulating? It's always the worst shit. If men can show their tits, we can show our tits. If men can have sex with whoever they want, we can have sex with whoever they If men can abandon their children, we can kill our children. It's always the vices, right? It's never like, I want to provide. I want to be a protector and a provider and I want to work hard. It's never, it's never any of the shit like that.